So this is pretty much the beginning of Giraffe and Annika. And you can see straight away how lovely it looks. Beautiful environment. For such a small indie game, it looks very good. This is one of my most favorite things. You can go to the dunny, as we say in Australia and New Zealand. Annika has lost her memories and she finds herself on a mystery island hoping to figure out what's going on. You can zoom in and out quite a bit, which is handy. And Mrs. Save is a very cute save slot. And these are the healing crystals that you find throughout the game. Um, they are plentiful and they are actually very important in certain situations. So you can see from this a door, and we'll see another one soon, uh, that you start out in a very enclosed, gated off area, uh, which you first need to explore and, you know, solve the first dungeon before you are allowed into the next area. And this is the very first dungeon in the game that you can do. I've obviously already um, played on quite a bit further, so I just um, revisited um, the beginning to show you what the game looks and feels like, really. Uh, Annika can only move at this one pace, that's it. It's reasonably fast. I think that's pretty much the first puzzle, you know, you have to do in the game. Uh, now we'll have a quick look inside. A very simple inventory that suits the game style. Uh, everything is very uh, basic, you'd have to say. Uh, it would be perfectly suitable for um, children to pick it up and just play. The game has a very fast-moving day-night cycle. Now this is an important conversation she's having with Giraffe. And it's being presented in storyboard format. Uh, this map is the only one I have ever seen that explains uh, that you have three dungeons on the island, which you obviously need to do and shows the layout. And this, as you can see, is the beginning of the first dungeon exploration, uh, which takes up chapter one. And once you've done that, you can open up another dungeon area. Just to demonstrate what happens 
when you fall in the water. The diving and surfacing controls don't work terribly well. I hardly ever manage to surface. And you're back to the last checkpoint. Annika can only swim short distances at this stage, so got to be very careful with the HP and immediately replenish. So this is now the second boss fight coming up with King Crab. And this is Annika's special staff that she needs for the boss fights for the rhythm game. So the instructions look uh, pretty simple and straightforward and the mechanics are quite basic and easy really. The only problem really is that I'm absolutely useless at rhythm games so I'll just show you a tiny bit so you get an impression what they're like. I've speeded them up a little bit because they're pretty straightforward. The great thing is that you can uh, repeat these uh, rhythm game boss fights as much as you like and practice uh, for extra achievements, etc. Here's Annika's great finale. Annika gets a new ability every time she defeats a boss in an elemental dungeon. This is a good example of her now being able to swim underwater for quite some length. By the way, the game has quite a few secret locations to discover and collectibles, etc. So there is quite a bit of replay value, I reckon. So she can now finally open blue gates. I took the opportunity, of course, to have a really good snoop around. Finding drums that you can play is one of those um, little discoveries you can make. I will continue to help Anika uncover the secrets of Speaker Island so she can find out why she was transported here. I hope you enjoyed the impressions. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.